Come a little closer. Have a seat by the fire. I have a story to tell. One time, a long time ago, there was a steel worker by the name of Steve Mestrovich. And he had a daughter named Mary. And she was the prettiest girl for miles around. Eyes of blue and hair as yellow as hot steel. There were a lot of eligible young fellas that worked at the mill. And they took to coming by Steve and saying, don't you think that Mary ought to be looking for a husband? Well, after several months of this, he said, you know what? I think I'll throw a party and we'll have a contest and we'll see who the best man is for Mary. So come one Sunday, down by the riverbank in an open field, Steve had it all fixed up. On one side, he had an area where the children could play games and run around. And on the other side, he had long oak tables where the old women would serve prune jack and spice cakes. On one end of the field, he had a pedestal where he put Mary so that she could see all them eligible young fellas. And they could see her. And those eligible young fellas, they all had eyes for Mary. But Mary had eyes for just one particular fella. Well, in the middle of this field, Steve had placed three steel bars. One steel bar was a small one, weighed about 300 pounds. The next one, laid in the middle, and it weighed about 500 pounds. And the third was a big hunk of steel, weighed more than the other two put together. And Steve made an announcement. He said, all right, all you young fellas, you're going to lift these steel bars. Now, anyone that can't lift the, this small steel bar, well, you can just go off and play games with the children. That's all. And any of you that's left, you can lift this middle bar. But if you can't lift that middle bar, well then you can just go help the old women serve prune jack and spice cakes to everybody. But the man that can live, lift this huge big steel bar, well that's the man that can marry my daughter. So all them young fellas, they go to pushing up their sleeves and they get ready to lift them small bars. Now, the first one was Pete Pusick. And everybody thought that he was the strongest man around because he could lift up steel bars like he was lifting toothpicks. And sure enough, he went up and just lifted up them small steel bars like they was nothing. Now, Eli Stanowski was next. Now, everybody thought that he might make a pretty good husband for Mary. And sure enough, he picked up them small steel bars even easier than Pete had done. And one after the other, them young fellas picked up them steel bars, except some of them boys, they didn't pick up enough steam to lift those small bars. So they were just relegated over to the children to play games with them. So them that could do it, they went to that middle bar. But you know what? There were only three men that picked up enough steam to pick up that middle bar. Pete, Eli, and a fella from a neighbor in town. Well, now was the moment of truth. Pete was the first one to approach that big hunk of steel. And he grabbed himself a glass of prune jack, swilled it down, <coughs> spit on his hands, and grabbed a hold of that steel bar. And he went to pulling on that steel bar and his arms started cracking. His eyes started to bulge out of his head, big as apples. And he started to sweat like he was standing in front of a blast furnace. But it was no good. That big steel bar didn't lift one inch off the ground. Well, Eli thought this was his chance. So he approached that big steel bar and well, he gave it a try, but same as Pete. That bar didn't move off the ground, not one inch. 
Well, this fella from the neighboring town, he thought this was his chance. So he goes up to that steel bar just as quick as can be. He grabs a hold of it, gives it a big strong tug, gives a grunt like a pig at dinner time, and his hands just slip right off of it. Well, he gives a hoop and a holler and he bends back down and he tries one more time and same thing, just slipped right off of that bar. Well, about that time, a laugh comes from the crowd. <laughs> and everybody looks around, who's that laughing like that? And out from the crowd, stepped the, stepped the biggest man you ever did see. Why, his back was as big as a door. His hands were as large as buckets. His neck was as big as a bull. And his arms, well, they were as big around as my belly. He must have stood over seven foot tall. And everybody looked at everybody and everybody said, well, who is that fella? My name's Joe Magaretz. And everybody went into laughing. Because <laughs> Magaretz, in Croatian, meant donkey. Well, that didn't bother Joe none. He said, that's right, Joe Magaretz. I don't do anything but eat and work, just like a donkey. Why, I'm the only steel man in this whole world. And I'll prove it to you. And with that, he ripped open his shirt, and sure enough, his hands were made of solid steel. His arms, solid steel. Everything was made of steel. And he says, I was born in Ore Mountain, and I come down here looking for work. And with that, he picked up that huge steel bar and he just twisted it in two with his bare hands. Well, Steve Mistrovich, he rushed up to Joe and he took him right to his daughter Mary. And Joe took one look at Mary, sort of dumbfounded. And he said, why, that's the prettiest girl I ever did see. But that's no business for me. I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I don't have time to marry and sit around the house. Besides, I think that I seen Mary get a little dizzy in the head when she looked at Pete. And after me, He's the best man around. And Mary was happy about that because Pete was the fella that she liked better than anyone. And right then and there, Steve pulled a priest from the crowd and Mary and Pete were married there right on the spot. And everybody was happy and had a big time, except for Joe. Now, even though he was made of solid steel, he had a heart of gold. And a sadness overcame him. Well, he threw himself into his work. He got a job on the number seven blast furnace. Why, Joe could stir the hot steel with his bare hands. He could pick up molten steel and squeeze out rails from between his fingers. Eight rails at a time. Why, he made more rails in that one furnace than all the other furnaces put together. So much so that the roller boss comes one day and says, Joe, we're going to have to close the mill on Thursday this week. You made more rails than, we, than we've got orders for. Well, Joe didn't know what he was going to do with himself. What was he going to do if the mill had closed down over the weekend? So as he was turning down his furnace, he heard the melter boss say that one day he hoped to make the best steel that was ever made. And that one day he was going to tear down that mill and he was going to build him a brand new one. And that's when Joe got himself an idea. Well, Monday rolls around and the melter boss comes back in. And what does he find? But Joe sitting up in a bucket ladle, clear up to his chin in boiling hot steel. And Joe says to him, you take this steel, the steel that has me in it, and you'll find that you'll have made the best steel that ever was. And he just sat back and let that steel just melt him up. Well, pretty soon they 
poured them out and rolled them out and sure enough that was the strongest straightest seamless piece of steel that was ever made and that melter boss said this here steel was made by Joe Magaraz this steel here has a minute and we're gonna take this beam and we're gonna take this channel and we're gonna build the finest meal, mill that there ever was well from that day forward if you look at something made of solid steel, you'll see a little bit of steel, but a whole lot of man inside it. And if you listen careful, you can hear them that made it laugh and be proud as anything.